If you want to know how you can have financial security during your retirement years, stay tuned to the Safety First Financial Show with founder John Panaccio. So his name is John Panaccio, and what do you think? Is he a movie star? No, not quite, not yet, but he's he's a star, and he's a star in the financial world, and we're so happy that he is giving a lot of his attention to us and our readers and our radio listeners. And so I want to welcome you to our show again, John. Good morning. Good morning. So, you know, John, your information is really great. And we've talked a lot about all sorts of things. In fact, we said, what will the next market downturn impact you? But there's some other things that I think people really do need help with, and that's long-term health care insurance. I'll tell you something, or some sort of life insurance that helps them with it. And I know you have a lot of answers. Well, one of the scariest things that a retired person faces is you build up this wealth and, uh, you know, you, you may have a good pension and a couple good social security checks. And then, uh, your spouse goes into a nursing facility, uh, you know, eight, nine, $10,000 a month. And four or five years into this, you've eaten away at your assets. And, uh, then that spouse dies and the surviving spouse is left with, you know, reduced income, which we'll talk about later on, but also maybe no assets left. Uh, And one thing that a lot of people know about long-term care insurance, and the thing they find out is that the older you are, you have to be able to get approved for it. It's tougher to get approved for long-term care insurance than it is for life insurance because you could end up ill and need home care or nursing home and not die. So it's harder to get approved, okay? The second thing is, premiums are not guaranteed to go up. They can go up. So I've sat down with many people that bought long-term care insurance 15 years ago, and the premiums have gone up pretty dramatically over time. Why is that? People ask, why did that happen? Because companies were just getting into long-term care insurance 15, 20 years and didn't price it right. And the, you know, they just didn't price it right. So they had to over time reprice it. So John, people ask me, John, what would you do to protect us clients have asked from home health care, assisted living, long term care, without spending eight, ten thousand dollars a year on long term care insurance. Well, I'll give you a couple examples of how you can do that. Okay. I'll start out with the first one. So I'll tell you about a sale I just made this week. Okay. And it was a client that had money, liquid money sitting there. And they're in good health. They're 67, and they're in very good health. Excuse me. So where do they have the liquid money? Just in a checking Money account? market account. Money, money market, market account. They're, you know, they've taken some money out of the market. They're concerned. And it's just sitting there earning hardly anything, nothing at all. Now, they don't need this money for anything, but they like the fact that it's liquid just in case. So, matter of fact, to this client, having it liquid is very important. And some to them, an annuity was a little problematic because they didn't want to tie up the money for a period of time. They didn't like the idea if you cashed all out before that 10 years that there's surrender charges. Okay. So I told them this is something we can look at. Uh, they wanted to put in uh, $400,000. They had a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. So I showed them a product that, uh, number one, it had no surrender charges. So liquid, you put in 400,000, you can get out your 400,000 with no problem. Second part was they were, it was a female age 67. Uh, it gave her $800,000 in death benefit. This was standard. Not, she's in, not preferred, but she's in good health. Now here's the first part. If she can't do two ADLs, that's two activity, a daily living can't bathe, can't transport, can't cook, can't do two, you know, there's some parameters for 90 days and this and that, then they will accelerate that death benefit, 24% of it a year for four years. They'll give you 96% of that money over four years to help pay for those things. But it gets better. It actually gets better. It also is like an index annuity. It follows an index. Let's just, for simplicity's sake, since a lot of people know what the S&P 500, in, its, in the policy anniversary, it will give you the gains of the S&P 500 
up to 11%. So if the S&P 500 makes 5%, you make 5. If it makes 10, you make 10. If it makes 15%, you will get it's up to 11. You'll get 11%. But if the S&P 500 goes down, this type of product has a minimum guarantee of 2.5%. Even if, So you have that guarantee. So let's just take it this way. If, if the S&P 500 goes up 10%, the next year the S&P goes down, you don't lose your principal or the 10% you made that year. It's locked in and it's liquid. Okay, so I have to stop you here. Okay. By the way, you're listening to John Panaccio. John is a, an expert in finance and, and he comes up with all these, these products that most people don't know about. Um, and I do want to give you a phone number for him because... I know as we keep talking, sometimes I forget. I get so interested. But just write this down. It's um, uh, Pencil Talk Radio. I say that because if you don't write it down, you're never going to have it. You won't know where to find it. It's 954-564-0052, extension 1. That's 954-564-0052. Okay, so, John, how can they do that? And not now lose money like, of course, the long-term health care people didn't figure it right. What if all of a sudden this happens? Where are they going to get the money from? Well, these, I don't mean the people with the policies, but the companies. These products have been around 20 years. They're not new. The liquidity rider, it's called a liquidity rider, the rider that allows it to be liquid, no surrender charge, is new. But And most reps won't sell it, to be honest with you. Because they dramatically reduce the commissions if you add that rider. So uh-huh. that's why most reps won't do uh-huh. it. Okay, So that's the gotcha. Yep. But think about this. Think about, okay, put $100,000 in there. It gives me $200,000 in life insurance. For instance, I'm giving a hypothetical that grows every year. The death benefit grows that you can access the death benefit if you get ill while you're alive. <laughs> and that account value If the market goes up, it goes up and locks in. It goes down, it doesn't go down. And there's no penalty period and no surrender charges. So if you need the money, it's there for you. And you could even take income from it. If you you have $100,000, it grows $6,000 one year, and you want to take it out, you take it out. The $100,000 is still, you you don't have to worry about liquidity on it. And the one thing you've told me in our our previous conversations is you only deal – with five-star, I call five-star yeah, insurance companies. The, one of the companies that have this is a 125-year-old company, A-plus rated. So you don't have to worry about that aspect. So, see, you you answered my question, though. Unfortunately, and, you know, people on commission do look for things that are going to pay them more. So when you said what you said, that it doesn't pay as much, so they'd rather put someone into something different. But because you've had a lot of clients for a lot of years, what you want to do is give them the very best so that they'll just Best stay. thing for themselves. Yeah. You know, as I said, a lot of people don't want to lock things up. It's, it's better than sitting it in the bank, okay? And think about this a minute, okay? And, it, you know, it's when, well, actually, we're going to get into this question a little later on. But just remember, at the death of a spouse, there are a lot of times income needs because incomes drop. That de- If you don't use the money, if you don't need it, Eventually, it's going to pay off a death benefit, and that death benefit is tax-free. It's tax-free. It also is creditor-proof. So if you ever get sued and you get a judgment against you, the cash value within the life insurance policy cannot be attached by lawsuits. It's creditor-proof. So that's something very important also. Yeah, we don't think about that. Most people don't think they're ever going to have – People come after them, but you could have an accident in your car, right? You could have And something. not have enough insurance to cover the exactly. damages. Exactly. Uh, just so an added little thing. And, and you're protecting them. And why you're making money, if you don't take the money out, the taxes are deferred also. So, you know, if you have, if you make $12,000 one year and you don't take that out, there's no taxes on that $12,000 until you take the money out. It's all deferred. So these are all little positives about it. And one of the negatives about these type of plans where, okay, you put a hundred thousand dollars in there. And if you need your money year two, there's only $90,000 in there available because of surrender charges. This one has no surrender charges. And it's surrender not, charges can be that much. It when, can be 10% on annuity and life insurance for sure. Now there's policies you hear about that has what they call return of premium. 
That is different. Let me explain. Return of premium means that you put 100000 in, you get your 100000 back. But if that account value is 112000 it doesn't mean it, no surrender charge. You're going to get the 112. It just means you're going to get your hundred thousand dollars back. Right. This policy is not a return of premium. It's a way. It's a waiver of surrender charges. If there's 112 in there, you get the hundred twelve thousand if you need it. So very important. And and all these policies, these are, uh, these are current. I mean, they can't do anything with them. Once you sign it, it's not for five years or, you know, then it's over. Or... No, it's contract. This thing's are contractually guaranteed that, you know, the, the, the maximums, the 11% cap, those can go up and down once a year. They're adjustable. To, and generally, and I will tell you generally, the higher the interest rate out there, and the interest rates are low right now. I've seen these caps at 14, 15, 16% in the past. The higher the interest rate becomes, the higher the caps usually. So you can expect that if interest rates go up, these products are going to become better. And now with the stock market, of course, going off the charts, uh, and people, I'm sure all your clients call you every day and say, what do you think, John? What should I do, right? What do you tell them? Well, first of all, they, they Buy do. Buy more annuities? Well, they, they say that, but a lot of them have forgotten about 2007. And they just think this is... Some believe it's going to go on forever. Others are very scared. So, uh, you know, uh, this is the main statistic I want to give you. Since the 1800s, there's been a bear market every 10 years. Since the 1800s. Uh, And the last one we had was in 2007, and it ended in 2009. We've had the the longest bull market that we've had. And it's... You know, we're closing in on the end of 2017. So we've had a bull market through all of from 2010 till today. If we don't have a bear market, and for those people who don't know what a bear market is, it's a significant drop in the market. Okay. If we don't, and the average bear market has been 32%, 32% down. If we don't have a bear market by 2020, it'll be the first time since the 1800s. So it's most likely coming, and it's a natural thing that happens. And uh, the older you are, the worse a bear market will hurt you. Okay, so now I'm going to put you on the spot and get you to tell me why do we have to have a bear market? Why? why? I mean, it's going up, and what would cause that? A war or something? Okay, that's a very good question. I'm going to give you the different things. First of all, uh, the, the, the different... Uh, the different ways we use of measuring if 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 stocks are overvalued, the different tools we use, they say that stocks right now are overvalued almost by double. That's one one ah. thing. But there's much more. Okay. The second thing is we have for those of you that know what margins are. You say you got a mil, half a million dollars in your stock account, and you can borrow up to half of that to buy more stock. We have more margins than we've ever had before. So if the market starts going down, I we have margin calls, Whoa. which they force them to sell the stock, which can cause a big landslide. Right. The third thing is that's important is what we call buybacks. This is when companies buy back their own stock. And in the last four to five years, there's been over $2 trillion of buybacks. Why do they do that? Because if they buy back their own stocks, there's less stocks available, which makes supply and demand makes the price go up. A lot of buybacks, and then and then of course, you got to look at foreign foreign events and foreign situations and things of that sort. How that could affect it. So you couple that with the fact that that uh, we haven't had a bear market this decade. It looks like there's a pretty good chance that it could happen. The question is, how bad will it be? And I can't really answer that. No, and I'm I don't sure, know. And sure you can't answer that. But I was also thinking. Um, don't people let's say they bought bought start they bought their stock, you know, low, and now they could take a lot of profit, but then they have to pay taxes on well, it. Well, is there something they could do not to have to pay the taxes, well, put it into something else? Well, the first thing you want to look at is your IRA money because there's no tax for liquidating that. It's a rollover. There's no tax for liquidating that. So the first, when someone is concerned about, you know, I want to start getting into something that has less risk, the first thing you can look at is your IRA money because there is no implication for a rollover. 
Then you look at your, your what we call our non-qualified money, which could have capital gains tax for selling it. And that's problematic. And there's no, you know, there's no real good way of dealing with that. Okay. Uh, but the worst part would be is if you've doubled your money in the last seven years and it cuts in half and you've lost all the gains you made in the last seven years and then it takes seven years to recover and that's 14 years and and if you're 70 today you're then 84 before you got it back even so it but it isn't a simple situation that if you have high gains you're non-qualified your money your non-ira money you know it, it, it especially when trump may be trying to get capital gains tax lowered there's a lot of moving parts to this whole dilemma so you and i'll give you one example what you're just talking about can it become problematic I had a client that took $50,000 out of their IRA to buy a car, okay, buy a new Cadillac. And her and her husband just get a Social Security check, and they don't have enough income that their Social Security was even being taxed. What this mistake created was they had enough income that year that their Social Security checks got taxed. And it, and it increased their tax bracket, of course, and they end up owing about $16,000 when they've never owed money before. And one other point I want to make is they didn't realize this at the time. Their Part B of Medicare, it's means tested. That premium that comes out of your Social Security, they made more money that year. The premiums went up for the next year. Where they could have got a – we looked. There was a zero loan being offered at the time. They could have paid 10000 a year on the loan. It hadn't take just 10000 a year out of the IRA. wouldn't affect anything. So – when I sit down with somebody, we don't just talk about – we talk about not making these kind of mistakes. So that part about just getting you to sell a, a stock portfolio that's going to create a huge tax, we don't just do those things without really looking into it is the point I'm trying to make. You made a good point, and I'm very impressed because I think most people, especially now when uh, there are – and I'm not being chauvinistic, but a lot of men were always running the company, you know, running the family. They ran the financial – um, portfolio. So now this widow has to look to you. She has to look to someone that she can trust who will now keep her as safe financially as her husband did. Well, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, I just had, believe it or not, the best man in my wedding died on Sunday. Oh. I went over there and he she's was young. Well, he was 79, but her, his wife was 59, but they've been married 30 years. So she is like, what now? Well, just little things to deal with, okay? She's 59. She doesn't get to collect his Social Security at age 60 a year, okay? But in most cases, when you lose a spouse, your income drops because there could be a pension going away. You're going to, if there's two Social Security checks, one of them will go away, the smaller one. But here's what's really interesting. Your income could drop and your income tax bracket could go up because instead of filing jointly, you're then filing single, and it's a whole different world on how much you can make for the lower tax bracket. So I've seen many times that someone, you know, they lose their spouse, their income drops, but they're paying a higher percentage, not necessarily more taxes, but a higher percentage. And, uh, they, you know, they're not prepared for those type of things. And they may have, their, you know, there may have been a, per, a pension of 40000 a year, and then the smaller Social Security check was twelve thousand, and all of a sudden they, the surviving spouse, goes from, you know, they lose fifty two thousand dollars a year in income out of seventy, and her bills or his bills doesn't drop that much. So when I sit down with the husband and wife, I ask these questions: Do you have a pension? What happens at the death? Do you know that one out of every two people I ask question don't know? I was just going to say, I'll bet. They don't know. They have no idea. And, and what, you know, and then, so let's, so we have this software program that shows, you know, we put in some situations and it, it shows how long their money will last, huh? you know? And the one thing that blows it up all the time is if they lose 40% of their mar- of their money, of their portfolio in a bear market. It just, it, it, it puts them in a situation. See, if you're taking, I want you to think about this a minute. And we're going to make it simple by saying 100000 If you've got $100,000 and you're taking 5% out, 5% of $100,000, $5,000 a year income, that can be, you know, whatever number, but it makes it simple. And if we have a, a bear market like the last one, which basically lost 
That so over two years, you're taking five thousand a year out, and your hundred becomes fifty, and then you took ten out over two years, it becomes forty. Now five thousand dollars is no longer five percent; it's thirteen percent. So either one of two things you got to do: you got to reduce your income on forty five percent. What is that? That's two thousand. It's not five, or you continue to take five thousand a year out. You're going to deplete that asset, and you're probably going to outlive it. So there is plans that will guarantee income for the rest of your life, even if your account, because you live so long, taking that five thousand goes to zero. It will continue to pay you the five thousand dollars a year. Well, that's well, that's five thousand. So if you had made a larger sum, if you had a million dollars there, right, it's going to guarantee like, you, for instance, fifty thousand right, I mean, a year. Right, and you can even set it up for it's throughout both your and your spouse's lifetime. So if one of you lived to be ninety six, and it depleted that asset, that spouse will continue to get that fifty thousand dollars a year. Right, because you don't know if if which spouse is not is going to go first, right? Right, but it will affect them. Because you're saying that if you only now going to take one person in income tax, I've never, never thought about that. Because there's a very there's a large amount taken for. But well, the smaller the smaller, I believe it's about seventy thousand dollars that you the smaller income tax brackets on filing jointly, and it's like thirty five thousand if you're single, single. So it's wow. it's it's a big difference. Hmm. Well, that's why someone has to really go to someone with a lot of experience. I mean, I know you see a lot of commercials now and a lot of. People are receiving uh, things on the internet, and they have to be careful. They really you know, Nita. What they can do if they if they don't want to come in to my office, they can call my office and talk to me and ask me questions over the phone. And and you know, I can a lot of times the phone listen to them and 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 dialogue with them and see if if you know they have some issues and problems out there. Uh, If anything I'm talking about may be a fit, so if they if they dial the number. And, and and talk to if if I'm not available, just leave a message and I'll always get back with them. Because a lot of this, you know, you can give them good advice over the phone, and sometimes they do need to come into the office and see me. Well, this is great, John. I'm so glad John Benaccio is is our wonderful uh, financial I call him financial guru. And the phone number for him is nine five four five six four zero zero five two. That's nine five four six. Oh, excuse me, five six four. Zero zero five two nine five four five six four zero zero five two extension one or you can just leave a message and his office actually is in Fort Lauderdale and so if you did want to go that's interesting to do you can and Anita or let me mention just... one other thing too we have offices throughout Southeast Florida so uh, Boca you mean anybody where they're right. located Boca Plantation Aventura Plant you know uh, Pompano so uh, so if you know, if they don't want to come to our main office of Fort Lauderdale, we have other offices around, too, that I can meet them at. Or they can come here to the radio show and talk to you after you're off the radio. Yeah, we well, could do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's great to have something like that. You know, years ago, John, I don't know why this changed. If you had a financial planner or you had, you know, things like this, it wasn't complimentary. You know, you have a lot of time invested, and yet... It's all changed. Uh, things have changed this way, haven't they? Well, you know, it's uh, the products I sell that I that I use. The products that you don't pay a commission. The commission comes from the insurance company. Everything I use is insured products from insurance companies. Not any risk. So the good news is, is rather than a manager, a money manager that is charging you a annual fee. You know, and a variable annuity. Some variable annuities, the three, the fees are three and a half percent. So on, you know, three hundred thousand, it's over ten thousand dollars a year just in fees. Amazing. Think about that. Yeah, I, I am. I'm thinking about. It, so that's right. So it's a much better way, and this gives you a lot more freedom to to really help them buy the right prop. You know, right uh, policy. And the last thing is, um, and we don't probably don't have time, but we were gonna. I, mean, I think we did cover it. What does a retired person have to worry about at the death of a spouse? And we did. Yeah, we, we covered yeah, we pretty did much cover that. that. So. And, and it is. And, of course, you know, let's face it. When someone you love dies, that in itself is so traumatic. And now you have to worry about the financial, to worry about, about moving. You have to worry about so many things. Yeah, yeah. As I said, with my, with my, uh, 
best man at my wedding dying this Sunday. I, dro- I drove over to, to their house, which was about an hour and a half drive from me. And uh, and believe it or not, I, I beat the funeral home there, which was I didn't oh. expect. But I, the, the questions she had for me, I took her to lunch. The questions she had, you just, you know, I, I got to send a letter to Social Security, right? You know, Social Security check, stop that. You know, what am I going to do with health insurance? I actually go off his health insurance. She was only 59, so she's being covered by his group health that doesn't get, there's all kinds of issues and now she's got to do. stuffs when someone dies. Not with everybody, but with her group health, well, on him, he dies, she's no longer covered. And that isn't true of all companies. On this one, it is. So now she's got to go and purchase health insurance, which she can do through, you know, the Obamacare system because she has coverage. It's going to be extremely expensive at 59 years old. Uh, I hope that she has life insurance from him. That will help her. So. Yes, yeah, financially, she's okay there and did have life insurance. He did have life insurance, but it's more of, you know, what do I do next? She doesn't work? Uh, no, she does not work. Oh, okay. So this was a, she was lucky to have you. Yeah, because... no, she's just, we're going to sit down over time and get things straightened up. But the questions were just, I contact Social Security. What about my health insurance? And well, that's right. I mean, it's everybody has these questions, and it's uh, and and that's why it's nice. So I, what I like about what you said is, when you meet someone, you just don't say, okay, let's just buy this policy. You say, okay, let's look at your lifestyle. Let's look at what you do have. W- what do you want to do with with this? Or, you know, it's it's very important. A lot of people won't take the time to do that. They well, just want to sell something. Our first appointment is all about just talking. Thank you very much, John. We'll, we'll hear from you next week. Be sure to listen each Saturday morning from 7.30 to 8 on WSBR and hear John Finaccio, founder of Safety First Financial, talk about important retirement strategies. Call 954-564-0052 or go to their website, sfinancial.net.